Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good morning, everyone. Again, this is a great pleasure for me to be among you today and share with you some and share with you my journey, which was not possible without my great team who are on board, and especially my assistant is here, Anu, today. So, uh, being an Emirati woman and being a part of the golden years of United Arab Emirates, I consider myself so lucky. I cannot say that we as an Emirati women, we are smarter or brighter or more pretty than any other woman in the region, but confidently I can say that we are luckier. We are lucky because we have a great leader who believes in women and he literally made sure every leader or whoever planning anything in this land, any project, they also believe in that and they make sure that they give a woman a quite equal chance to show herself and to contribute effectively in the development of the country. In the field of genetics, if you will go through my career, and my career development, you will notice that I've been in more than one position, mainly related to human development, either in healthcare or in community development. And those opportunity was given to me, and I was, I can say that, I was not asked if I would like to take those posts or not. But again, I believe in the big power of Allah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans something for us, we believe that it is the best. And believe me, that's what I realize in the end of my journey in each position. And when we talk about magic today, we talked about the jinni, we talked about different things. Again, we go back to a very particular jinni within ourselves: is your genetics. Is your DNA, which you grant from your parents. And again, with the luck, and the will of Allah, it depends which part of that you took it over. And in the, in the early talk with my dear colleague, Mr. Banu, I would like to say something related to genetics and women. As a woman, I'm so, so happy to be a woman. Believe me. And we are so lucky to be a woman. We are the main reason of humanity to be continued. We have to have confidence in that. And when we see a boy who's smart enough to compete with a calculator, that simply goes back to his X chromosome. And you know the gene and the genetics and the chromosome parts which are responsible of human intelligence is located on X chromosome. So if the boy is a smart, 99.9%, .9 all, all the credit goes back to his mother. And, and poor father, he's there to take care of both of them. <laughs> so as a woman, we are born to be special. We are born to be smart. We are born to be responsible of whole humanity. Because of that, I, as an Emirati woman, my name is Maryam Muhammad Fatma Mother. And you can, if you know that usually in our country, a woman's mother, a woman's name always will be followed with all those gentlemen who were the reason of her excess. So my name is Maryam, my father's name is Muhammad, my grandfather's name is Mother. And one of the things which I've done early back to two, in 2000 when I graduated from medical college, I draw my plan till 2050. And one of the plan which I would like to achieve where I will have where I will start lobbying, and I already started to, in 2000, lobbying that very soon in United Arab Emirates, when a woman's or male name officially will be mentioned in any official document, the third name will be his mother name. And because of that, always, if you will come and visit my office, my name on the table is Miriam Hamid Fatma Mother. I make sure that the name of my mother is there. And I would like to have a humble request from all of you. 
If you will start signing a book, or you are allowed to put your name on your table, uh, on your desk, or have a social media name, please try to remember this lovely woman who made sure that you carry a good gene, which will help you to maintain a good humanity throughout the coming journey of human being. So please, next time when you introduce yourself, don't forget to mention your mother name. If it is not the second, make sure it is the first, if it is possible. So going back to genetics. In 2000, when I graduated from the medical college, from Dubai Medical College, I had my rotation in Latifa Hospital, particularly in Thalassemia Center. And during those rotations, I used to see the blame and the suffering and the guilt feeling which shared between both parents when they see their child coming every three weeks for a blood transfusion, and every 12 hours per day, a whole machine is on his tummy to help him to collate extra iron overload in his body. I went back home, and I searched about this particular disease. And at that time, Cyprus were celebrating 11 years where no single child was born with thalassemia. They had no magic stick, simply what they had. They had a very constructive enforcement of a law which doesn't allow two carriers of a disease to get married, and the church will not approve that marriage. And in the end of the day, if they insist to go ahead with this relation, the government will not be responsible or the government will not pay from the tax money to cure their children. So from that time, people were having a healthier generation and a more stable community. I went back to the hospital, and I went to the most senior person in the hospital with two-page summary of my plan in my lovely country. And I do remember till today his answer to me, Miriam, you are just graduate from medical college. Leave this task for the ministry. Leave this task for the people who are on the chair, and they will make sure this law will be in place. I went back home, and like every day, I was not so much happy. My mother, she told me, Miriam, what's wrong with you today? I told her, Mama, this might happen. I want to do change, but I'm looking forward to graduate from my medical college and be someone one day where I can contribute. Imagine my lovely mother, she's illiterate. She cannot write and read. She came back after half an hour telling me, Mama Miriam, here in Dubai, as you know, on Friday, we in our neighborhood from 9 to 11, women, they gather for gossiping and sharing new recipes of food. So my mother, she asked me, Mama, this time, what about this Friday? I'll call our neighbor. Uh, who their son is getting married to our other neighbor daughter, let them come over and try to explain to them how important it's to be screened and to give them some more knowledge about this step. So we start on Friday, and from that day, imagine from my mud, from our house, then from the neighbor, then I started to be called over in different organization to talk about a common genetic disorder called thalassemia. And I love, one of my plan was to become a plastic surgeon. I love myself, I love beauty. My, my nightmare is the wrinkle around my eyes. And unfortunately, I had to change my major simply to be able to go in the morning in one of the community gathering and in the afternoon to go and have my duty in one of the primary healthcare clinic in United Arab Emirates. And imagine, because of that small support from my mother, an idea from her, very soon, imagine, we started that in 2000, and in 2004, I started a whole campaign called UAE Free of Thalassemia 2012, and the whole mission and the objective of this campaign was to enforce and advocate for a law which obligatory will force anybody who's willing to get married in my country to be screened for most common genetic disorder in this country, as well as to be tailor-made according to their family history. <laughs> and by March 2006, a law were approved by the cabinet. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so that's a magic. 
That's the magic which happened only in United Arab Emirates. And from there, I was nominated to take another step forward to improve the quality of the new generation of United Arab Emirates. And when I say generation of United Arab Emirates, I mean both Emirati and non-Emirati. People who is helping us to develop our country, we care about their children. And I hope most of you will know, if not, I would like to share with you another fact, which my government is doing it as a very simple way to thank all of you for what you are doing in this land. I don't know if you know or not that anybody who is born in the land of United Arab Emirates, they will be provided screening for five common genetic disorder, which will help your children if we diagnose them early enough to have a healthier life. And you are not paying for that. Additional to that, any child will be enrolled in grade one in United Arab Emirates, they will be screened for one of the most common genetic disorder, which might impair the perf educational performance of the boy in particular. Additional to that, any college student who will be admitted in any university in United Arab Emirates, they will be screened for three common genetic disorder unless they will not have admission. That's all done for all of your children and generation. And simply because of these steps and because of these laws which are in place, we look forward by 2023 to have a newly born generation of United Arab Emirates with a better quality of gene. And immediately I was given another chance as a first Emirati woman. And that time, I was only 27 years old, where I became the first Emirati woman to take a post of undersecretary for public health and primary health care. And while I was the single woman among a very senior Emirati gentleman, who really were the great help for me to progress well and to be able to give back to this lovely country. Allow me to share with you some of my strength, which I believe it's one of the strengths which any one of you can acquire and admit it to his life during his journey throughout a career development or a family in, in any way of your life development. So it goes back the way I see myself. Even when I am in a stage, I don't see myself a woman or, or, or a pretty lady, do you agree? Yes, with a bright color. I always imagine myself as a drop of water, and I mean that literally. A drop of water has a huge characteristic, which make it a really the most essential particle in this life, in this planet, for uh, any human life, any life to be existing. As a drop of water, I try to make myself transparent enough for the person who is in front of me. And that transparency depends on the level of the communication or the subject which we are talking about. And in the same time, if I am working within a team, I'll make sure that I am flexible enough to be around the team, regardless of their personality, regardless of their approach, but at least to be flexible enough to be surrounded with those team or I surround myself with them. And at the same time, if we go back to a drop of water, I always remember that even if I fall down in any step of my life, like a drop of water, one day it will evaporate and go back to the sky and have a lovely cloud somewhere where I'll make sure I'll start something else somewhere in, in another place. Again, if you go back to a drop of water, drop of water, as you know, and we hear earlier, about the vibration, about the energy. And I'm sure most of you understand and value how water is really strong. And for any vibration or any energy in life, you need the water to maintain the energy as sustainable source of empowering any particular machine or a human being or even a structure which is existing in this planet. As a drop of water, I make sure that when I got married before, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so lucky again to be, uh, to be surrounded by smart gentlemen, 
I mean gentleman, not a male. As you know, there is a male mosquito and a male donkey and a male human being. And there is a lot of human being who are in a shape of a male, but not necessarily to be a gentleman. And we and me, I'm lucky enough to be surrounded with a real gentleman. Starting from my leader, from my father, and from my husband, and living with my husband, I was lucky enough to have him as my partner. And proudly saying, my husband is number 27 of my proposal fiancé, or people who plan came forward to propose for me. And I'll tell you, he takes all the credit for all the 26 people who came earlier. Simply because I had two conditions for whoever is planning to get married with me and to be lucky enough, is he need to write in the marriage contract, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> he, he need to accept to write in the marriage contract that he is not allowed to stop me from continuing my study and he's not allowed to stop me from continuing my career. Imagine all the 26 male, they refuse to do that as a documentation, but they will keep it as a promise. And as you know, we have too many male who, who say the promise and they never keep it. And this gentleman who happened to be, <laughs> who happened to be my lovely husband, his name is Karam. And he's a great guy. He's the best, first, the best gentleman after my father. And I was lucky enough to get him on board. So he's the one who really helped me to believe in male and to respect uh, a male human being, even if he is not a gentleman. So that goes back to the shape and drop of water. When I was still in my parents' house, the whole approach was different. I cannot say right and wrong. But when I got married to this lovely guy, the real gentleman, I had to reshape myself. It was not easy. But always imagining myself as a drop of water, I used to take all this energy by imagining the drop of water in any situation I've been in. And that helped me a lot to be flexible enough to take the new shape of the environment which I'm living in. And with his support, I was able to maintain my transparency as well as to keep my characteristic as being a water, but in a different, different shape of a glass or a container. So as a woman, I'll finish. As a woman, please respect and believe in yourself and always imagine yourself as a drop of water. Thank you very much.